one quick addendum on Mill. <clears throat> when describing this qualitative dimension of pleasure and saying that human pleasures can differ qualitatively as well as quantitatively, Mill sort of poses the question, how might we go about trying to prove that some pleasures are in fact more valuable than other pleasures? Okay. Um, and uh, uh, doing something similar to what he did before, he says, well, what we would need to do is to point to what in fact people do desire. Just as Mill thought it was relevant to his ethical view that people do, in fact, desire happiness. Of course, that's controversial, but he certainly did think that. Well, he also thinks that hum that our opinions, that the sort of opinion of the masses, will tell us something about which pleasures are more valuable than which other pleasures. So he says, look, if you want to know which pleasures are more valuable, go ask people, right? And let the majority rule. And Mill, of course, thinks that the majority will will feel that these pleasures of the intellect and of the emotions and so on are, in fact, more valuable than the pleasures of the flesh. Right. Um, <clears throat> uh, so he's sort of being a kind of uh, uh, open to what people do, in fact, think, but, he's, but he certainly thinks that what they'll say is that these, these higher pleasures are worth more. And he says, any opinion counts so long as it's from someone who's been able to experience both kinds of pleasure. Right? Obviously, you can't really have a, a good, clear opinion about which pleasure is more valuable than another unless you've experienced both. Okay. Now, that means something interesting, which is that uh, pigs and dogs, they don't get to vote. Okay. Or fools, as Mill calls them. And of course, he, by fool, he probably has in mind someone with... Uh, limited mental capacity, right? Um, their votes don't count because they haven't experienced both. They've experienced only the lower pleasures and not the higher ones. Okay. Now, that means, when, you, when you're capable of the higher ones, that can mean that you're often dissatisfied. Right? The higher pleasures are often more difficult to achieve. Okay? It's, it's not so hard to go get your fill of food and sex and so on. But it's a lot harder to attain these, these higher pleasures. And this leads Mill to say something sort of memorable, but, um, but somewhat surprising, which is, he says, better to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. Better Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. Okay. So nice words. Um, it's kind of amazing that a utilitarian can actually say this, of course, because if you're utilitarian, it seems like what matters is uh, human happiness, satisfaction, feeling satisfied. Um, but uh, the crucial point here, of course, is that Mill has said that human pleasures can differ qualitatively, and these higher pleasures are more valuable, and so the capacity to have them is, in fact, more valuable than any amount of these lower pleasures. Okay? That's why Socrates, with his abilities for these higher pleasures, is more valuable a thing, more a more valuable being than a fool who can't possibly have these higher pleasures. Uh, okay, I think that's all I need to say. <laughs>